The manager said that incompetents are banned from attending the company gathering. My granddaughter's voice trembled as she spoke, and a single tear rolled down her cheek. But it can't be helped. I wasn't able to attend high school properly, so it's only natural that the manager would say that. She tried to smile, but the sadness in her expression was undeniable, and it made my heart feel like it was being crushed. I can't stand by silently while my precious granddaughter is suffering like this. I raised my voice and started to walk toward the venue, but my granddaughter quickly grabbed my arm to stop me. Please don't. I'm still a new employee, and I don't want to cause any trouble at the gathering. Hearing her words, I calmed down a bit, but that didn't mean my anger was gone. So after leaving the hotel, I immediately made a call to a certain place. Hello, it's me. About that $1,100 million contract, I want to cancel it. I stated firmly and hung up the phone without waiting for a response. My name is David Davis. I'm 70 years old, retired from work, and now living a peaceful life. However, just relaxing at home didn't suit me. So when I mentioned this to an old friend, he asked if I could help out with his landscaping business. Since I've loved plants and trees since I was a child, I gladly agreed and now spend my weekdays taking care of gardens at hotels and parks. I used to run a company, but last year I passed the role of CEO to my eldest son. Most of my previous work involved office duties, so this landscaping job is a refreshing change and I'm enjoying every day. I truly feel blessed to be able to spend my remaining years like this. One day I was working in a nearby park, tending to the trees since early morning. Thanks for your hard work, Dad. As the sun rose and I was about to take a break from the heat, I heard a familiar voice behind me, causing me to turn around quickly. There stood my daughter, holding a plastic bag from the corner shop in one hand. Oh, you came? My daughter got married 25 years ago, but she settled down near our home, so she occasionally comes to check on me. Mom said you were here, so I thought I'd drop by. It's been getting hotter lately, so be careful of heat stroke, okay? With a slightly worried expression, she took a bottle of tea from the bag and gently handed it to me. Thanks. I was just getting thirsty, I told my daughter as I took the tea, unscrewed the cap, and brought it to my lips. The cold tea slid down my throat, and I instantly felt a cooling sensation throughout my body. Ah, this is just what I needed. When I turned to face my daughter, I noticed she had a troubled expression on her face. What's wrong? Is something bothering you? I asked her, concerned, and she looked down, murmuring. Well, the thing is, I've been a bit worried about Maria lately. The Maria she mentioned is my granddaughter. She's 23 and just started her career this spring. Before she began working, she lived nearby and would visit my house almost every day. Did something happen at work? I asked. It's still early days, so it's natural to have some worries. I said this, but my daughter's expression remained troubled. I wish it were just that but she's been so listless every day, and during dinner she seems lost in thought, barely responding when we talk to her. Maria has always been a quiet child, but she loves talking with her family, especially during meals, where she usually chats away happily. For her to remain silent and unresponsive to family questions is certainly unusual. Remember how Maria was quite frail when she was younger, I wondered if she might not be feeling well, so I asked her, but all she said was, my body is fine. My daughter sighed deeply as she spoke. Maria was born with a weak constitution and spent many years in and out of hospitals, which kept her from attending high school. But two years ago, she finally recovered, passed the high school equivalency exam, and did so with flying colors. This spring, she even managed to secure a job on her own. My daughter and I were overjoyed, tears streaming down our faces, and Maria was full of enthusiasm, saying, I'll do my best to contribute to society properly. 
But now that she's lost her energy since starting work, it's clear she must be struggling with something serious. All right, I'll go see Maria tonight. Maybe it's something she finds hard to talk about with her parents. I told my daughter this and then resumed tending to the park. Later that evening, I visited my daughter's home. When I entered the house, guided by my daughter, I saw my granddaughter Maria in the living room. She must have heard the noise from the front door, but she didn't even glance in our direction and just sat on the couch, lost in thought. Seeing her like this, I immediately realized how serious the situation was. I asked my daughter to go upstairs, deciding to speak with Maria alone. It's been a while. How have you been? I slowly sat down next to Maria on the couch, starting with a casual greeting, finally realizing that I was in the house. Maria turned to me with a startled expression. Oh, Grandpa, Maria said with a faint smile, but her voice lacked energy, reminding me of the days when she was in and out of the hospital. It made my heart tighten. I tried my best to keep my emotions hidden and maintain my composure as I spoke to Maria again. You don't seem to be in high spirits. Are you feeling okay? Oh yeah, I'm fine. It's just that I'm still new to the workforce and maybe the unfamiliar environment is wearing me out. But you don't need to worry about me, Maria answered, her voice trembling slightly. I remember you were assigned to the administration department. That must be tough, right? Well, I think I'll manage once I get used to it. By the way, what kind of tasks are you handling now? When I asked this, Maria suddenly clammed up, her eyes darting around. Maybe there are some things she doesn't want to discuss, even with family. But pushing her to talk might only add to her stress. Thinking this, I decided to stop pressing her for more details. Well, just don't push yourself too hard, okay? When things get tough, rely on your family. We're all here for you. Yeah, thanks, Grandpa. Maria smiled softly as she said that. Then something caught my eye. It was a brand new women's blouse hanging on the curtain rod. Is that yours, Maria? At first, I thought it might belong to my daughter, but on closer inspection, the design seemed more suited for someone younger. Pointing at the blouse, I asked, Maria, yeah, I got it for the upcoming company gathering. I see, maybe this will be a good opportunity to get closer to your colleagues and work might become a bit easier. When I said that, Maria quietly murmured, yeah, maybe. It's clear that Maria is struggling with something at work, but since she doesn't want to talk about it, pushing her to open up wouldn't be wise. I decided to leave it at that and head home for now. A few days later, I visited a hotel in the morning to trim the trees and shrubs in the garden. Around noon, I happened to glance toward the hotel entrance and noticed a sign with Maria's company name on it, along with the words Company Gathering Reception. Oh, so this is where the gathering will be held. I was a bit surprised by the unexpected situation. At the same time, a few businessmen crossed in front of me, chatting as they walked. Are we sure it's okay to leave all the preparations to her alone? One of the employees spoke with a tone of concern. My ears perked up at the unsettling words. The middle-aged man next to him, who seemed to be his boss, quickly responded, a low-educated, useless woman who didn't even finish high school is perfect for menial tasks. These words sent a wave of nausea through me. The didn't finish high school remark about Maria troubled me deeply. Even though it might have been a stretch, the more I considered the possibility, the more worried I became. I decided to finish my pruning work as quickly as possible and head to the company gathering. Following the signs inside the hotel, I eventually arrived at the venue. It seemed the gathering had already begun as the doors were closed. From a distance, I observed the area and I noticed a woman standing outside the venue wearing a blouse that looked familiar. Maria, what are you doing out here? When I called out to her, Maria flinched and turned to face me. Grandpa, what are you doing here? Maria, clearly not expecting to see me in a place like this, was just as surprised as I was. I happen to be here for some pruning work, 
So this hotel is the venue for the gathering, but why are you out here? It looks like the event has already started. When I easily asked, Maria's expression darkened again. Well, it's because. I know it's hard to talk about, but I'm really worried. Can you tell me? Encouraged by my gentle prompting, she finally spoke in a barely audible voice. The manager said that incompetents aren't allowed at the gathering. Incompetence? Who are they talking about? He meant me. He said anyone who barely attended high school is useless. Maria's voice trembled as she spoke, and a single tear rolled down her cheek. Hearing this, I couldn't help but clench my fists. I was certain that the manager who uttered such cruel words was the source of Maria's distress. But Maria, looking more resigned than angry, continued to speak. But it can't be helped. I didn't attend high school properly, so it's only natural for the manager to say that. Maria said this with a sad expression, trying hard to force a smile, but it only made her look more pitiful. I felt as if my heart was being crushed. There's nothing natural about this. It's unacceptable to treat you like this. I raised my voice and started to walk toward the venue. Grandpa, where are you going? Maria quickly grabbed my arm to stop me, but my anger wouldn't subside. I couldn't just stay silent while my precious granddaughter was suffering like this. I tried to shake off her grip, but Maria tightened her hold, refusing to let go. Please don't. I'm still a new employee, and I don't want to cause any trouble at the gathering. But that doesn't mean you should just endure it. I began to argue, but before I could finish, Maria spoke over me. Even though I passed the high school equivalency exam, my highest level of education is still middle school. But this company accepted me despite that. That's why, no matter what happens, I want to keep working here. Please don't make a big deal out of this. Hearing Maria's words, I began to calm down a bit. All right, I'm sorry for making you uncomfortable. Just remember, though, enduring everything isn't what makes you an adult. Keep that in mind. With that, I told Maria goodbye and left the hotel, but my anger didn't subside. This is something that should never happen, even if it weren't about my granddaughter. With that thought, I left the hotel and immediately made a call. The person I was trying to reach was busy, so it took some time to connect. Finally, on the twentieth ring, they answered, Hello, it's me, about that one hundred million dollars contract. I want to cancel it, I said firmly and hung up the phone without waiting for a response. Even though Maria had asked me not to make a big deal out of it, I couldn't just leave things as they were. I would make sure that those who hurt Maria would regret it. I murmured this to myself as I hurried home. A few days passed since the incident at the gathering. For a specific reason, I returned to the company where I had previously served as CEO, accompanied by my secretary. Even though it was an office I had known for years, stepping into it again after such a long time felt strangely refreshing. When I entered the CEO's office, my son, the current CEO, was sitting on the sofa. It's been a while since you've come here, Dad. I'm sorry for dragging you into this mess. When I apologized to my son, he replied with a smile. You don't need to apologize. A few minutes later, there was a knock on the office door. Yes, who is it? It's Johnson. I've brought Robert with me. At the response from behind the door, my son said, Come in, and the door slowly opened. Standing there was Mr. Johnson, the CEO of the company where Maria works, and beside him was the middle-aged man who had called her a low-educated, useless woman who didn't even finish high school. Mr. Johnson, is this the Robert you mentioned? I asked. Mr. Johnson replied with a small nod and a quiet, yes. Just as I was about to get to the main point, Mr. Johnson suddenly bowed deeply to me and my son, his face pale. I sincerely apologize for everything. I'll do anything, so please reconsider the contract, Mr. Johnson pleaded, still apologizing. Seeing this, Robert stood there with a blank expression, clearly not understanding what was happening. 
Mr. Robert, do you understand why your CEO is apologizing to us like this? No, I have no idea. The CEO just told me to come along, so I'm just as confused as you are. Though slightly flustered, Robert calmly answered my question. Then let me explain. I am the chairman of this company, and the current CEO is my son, who is sitting here. Because of your actions, we're considering canceling the $100 million investment contract we planned with your company. That's why Mr. Johnson is apologizing to us. Hearing my words, Robert's eyes widened in shock, and he was at a loss for words. Even though I had handed over the CEO position to my son, I still held the title of honorary chairman and retained a strong influence within the company. I was the one who made the immediate decision to cancel the investment contract and notified the other party right after the incident. Of course, after the call, I also spoke with my son and told him about what happened with Maria. He too was outraged by the situation his dear niece was put in and agreed to cancel the investment contract. Wait a minute, I'm in the administration department and have nothing to do with the $100 million investment contract. How can this be my fault? Typically, departments like sales handle business transactions. So, he couldn't understand why the head of administration was being held responsible for the cancellation of the investment contract. Then may I ask you one question? I inquired. Although Robert looked puzzled, he replied, Yes, go ahead. A few days ago, there was a company gathering at a certain hotel. I happened to be there for work and witnessed something unusual. What do you mean? I saw a female employee standing outside the entrance, not allowed to enter the venue. Can you explain what was going on? At my question, Robert's eyebrows twitched slightly and he looked a bit uncomfortable, but he quickly regained his composure and began to speak slowly. Oh, are you talking about the new employee, Miller? There was a good reason for what happened, Robert continued, now sounding more confident. She didn't even properly graduate from high school, makes frequent mistakes, couldn't handle the preparations for the gathering, and showed no signs of remorse. So, to prevent any further problems, I had her wait outside. Hearing Robert's blatant lies, I felt anger well up inside me but kept it in check. That young woman, Miller, is quite capable. Robert was clearly not expecting this and blurted out, What? I understand she passed the high school equivalency exam with top marks and was even told she could attend a prestigious university. Yet she chose to enter the workforce early, wanting to contribute to society. Robert stammered, trying to say something in response, but was clearly flustered. Could it be that you're judging people solely based on their academic background? No, it's just that she really does make a lot of mistakes. Even at this point, Robert tried to make excuses, but I pressed on. As I understand it, she's on paid leave today, correct? Ah, yes, but how do you know that? Robert's eyes widened as he answered, clearly shocked. As soon as he finished speaking, I leaned over and whispered to my secretary, who was standing nearby. The secretary then moved to the door of the CEO's office and slowly opened it. What are you doing here? Standing in the doorway was Maria. Robert, who never expected her to be here, was visibly shocked, his mouth hanging open. Maria, come in, I said, and Maria slowly entered the office. Once she was standing beside me, I turned back to Robert and continued speaking. The young woman you called incompetent is my granddaughter. Hearing this shocking truth, Robert's face turned pale and beads of sweat began to form on his forehead. I've heard everything from my granddaughter. You dumped all the preparation work for the company gathering on her, didn't you? I fixed Robert with a sharp gaze as I calmly recounted what Maria had told me. I didn't do that. You can't accuse me without proof. Robert frantically shook his head, trying to deny it. But I just heard from your own mouth that you left all the preparation work to her. What you see, I continued, is that I sometimes do pruning work in gardens and parks. On that day, I was taking care of the plants at the hotel where the company gathering was held. 
While I was working, I overheard you laughing and saying that as you walked past me. Robert looked visibly shaken by my statement. However, unwilling to admit it, he shook his head once more. I don't remember saying anything like that. You must have misheard. With no physical evidence to back up my claim, Robert seemed determined to find a way out of the situation. My son, Maria, and I were all exasperated by his behavior, but Robert continued speaking, ignoring our reactions. Are you seriously going to cancel a $100 million contract over something like this? I think this kind of arbitrary contract termination is a much bigger problem. Desperately trying to win support, Robert turned to Mr. Johnson for help. CEO, this is unfair. You shouldn't have to apologize to these people. Despite Robert's defiant attitude, Mr. Johnson remained grim. Robert, I'm afraid there is evidence. Looking down, Mr. Johnson murmured softly, What evidence? What do you mean? I asked Mr. Johnson to conduct a confidential internal investigation. The results are already in. As I said this, I picked up a document from the CEO's desk. This document contains the results of that investigation. We conducted interviews within the company and gathered numerous testimonies about the outrageous behavior you directed toward Maria. I handed the document over to Robert, who began to read it. As he did, his hands started to tremble. It seems that your behavior toward Maria was well known in the administration department. You only assigned her menial tasks, like making tea and cleaning, and you even verbally abused her. Many people felt sorry for her, and they were very cooperative in the investigation. I spoke calmly as Robert continued to tremble while reading. When he finished, his grip loosened, and the papers fluttered to the floor. But I heard she didn't even go to high school, so I was worried she'd make mistakes. That's why I gave her those tasks. I thought it was the right decision, he mumbled to himself. But I ignored him and turned to Mr. Johnson. It seems Robert hasn't learned his lesson. The rest is up to you, Mr. Johnson. To be honest, we've had a long-standing relationship with your company. I'd prefer not to cancel the contract so easily. Hearing my words, Mr. Johnson, who had been looking down, quickly raised his head and faced me. We've almost finalized the disciplinary action we plan to deal with this matter very strictly. Good, then please tell me more about it. Upon hearing Mr. Johnson's words about strict action, Robert seemed to realize what this meant for his future. He slumped to the floor, speechless. Apparently, Robert had also treated other employees with less academic background than his own with similar disdain. It seemed that Robert took great pride in being a graduate of a prestigious university. Whenever he encountered someone with a lower academic background, he developed an inexplicable animosity and saw them as an enemy. This was the reason behind his harassment. The investigation also revealed that several employees had been forced to resign due to his actions, which confirmed that Robert would be dismissed. Additionally, Mr. Johnson admitted, I am largely responsible for this incident and offered to take a significant pay cut as a form of accountability for his lack of oversight. My son and I appreciated Mr. Johnson's response and we decided to proceed with the $100 million investment contract. With Robert gone, Maria was finally entrusted with her regular duties. She even received apologies from everyone in the administration department who felt sorry for not being able to stop Robert's harassment. Now it seems she's enjoying her work. When I visited her recently, I was relieved to see her cheerful and energetic again. There will undoubtedly be more challenges as she continues her journey as a working adult, but as her grandfather, I'm committed to watching over her growth every step of the way.